Irish Liverpool band that isn't the Beatles, let's exclude those guys, would you want to be in if you weren't in the Lightning Seeds? When I first started, I felt like I should just find a band I absolutely loved and then I should pretend I was in that band. <laughs> and then when I produced them, I should make it sound like I wished it was if I was in it. <laughs> yeah. And that was my kind of process. And the first band I ever produced was Echo and the Bunnymen. So I think it'd have to be Echo and the Bunnymen. <laughs> hey, producer Mick, he's like, I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to, yes, <laughs> all right, you know. <laughs> Graham Norton Radio Show on Virgin Radio. Of course, you are famous for Lightning Seeds, but you were also in the band Big in Japan with Holly Johnson, Bill Drummond of KLF, Budgie from Sushi and the Banshees, Dave Balfe, who set up food rock records, of, of course, they signed Blur, Clive Langer, who produced Madness, and Elvis Costello. I'm sorry, but how on earth did so much success come out of one band? Please explain. And how could that band be so bad with those people in it? <laughs> I didn't want to say That's anything. That's the real mystery. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? It's, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, well, I think Liverpool at that time, I guess, there was a club called Eric's, and a lot of people, a lot of misfits, really, who were all into music and obviously destined to be in bands, all kind of, you know, gathered in that in that club and got to know each other. Mm. So I think that's probably... And the band was kind of managed by the guy who owned the club and we were always around the club. So And it was a bit like anyone who wanted to could kind of join for a bit, probably. You know what I mean? Although mm. it was only going for a couple of months. It's lasted... The legend has lost, lasted a lot longer than the band, to be fair. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was only going for a couple of months. I think I, my memory might be fading, but not that long. You know. I'll tell you what has lasted uh, the test of time. Uh, Three Lions, a few days ago, it celebrated its 27th birthday, didn't it? Yeah, apparently that makes me feel... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird that it was that long ago, to be honest. Yeah. It makes me feel old. The greatest football song ever. It really is. Now, you were commissioned, weren't you, to write the song back in 96. Is it true you only agreed to do it on the condition that Skinner and Badil participated? Well, initially they asked me, you know, would I like to write a song for the England football team? Uh, you know, and I, it wasn't something I particularly wanted to do, uh, although I'd quite, you know, I'd like New, New Order's song, mm. but it just felt like it maybe wasn't the greatest idea. And then <laughs> the idea became, well, that the competition is going to be here and it was getting very exciting. There were yeah. going to be games all, all around. So, you know... I, and then I was watching Fantasy Football, which at the time, you know, was kind of a, um, the first of that kind of type of show, really. Mm. So I kind of went back and said, you know what, actually, if we could, you know, if it could be a celebration of the, of the competition coming here as well, and maybe if these two guys would agree to, uh, you know, to sing it, then I'd, I'd be up for it. And then everything just came from that. How much did they participate as well? Did you, is it right that you wrote the song, they wrote the lyrics? Uh, yeah, well... I think, yeah, they did. I mean, they did a fantastic job. I think comedians are brilliant at, um, you know, they're just kind of great with words, mm. aren't they? And with, mm. You know, they're, they're, they're very, uh, and they're a couple of clever guys. So, yeah, I think we had the It's Coming Home, but because that was kind of the idea of, you know, the competition coming home. And then they wrote the whole rest of the lyric, which I think is a brilliant lyric, to be honest. Do you know? It is. Uh, do you know what I love about the song as well? That it was nicked as a footy chant by other countries football fans resulting in it charting in places like Germany number 16 the chance <laughs> yeah and, and, and other play you know I've had we've had requests from you know probably all over the world for people to to change the words and <laughs> use it for their for their sport not just football so it's now you're on tour with madness later in the year have you toured with these guys before that sounds like a right who I've got to be honest yeah, we have. We did some shows with them, you know, a few years, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a big fan of Madness. I think they're such a, I've always loved their tunes, you know. Me too. I, I remember I saw them, I actually saw them play before they were called Madness in a pub when they, I think they were called the Morris Miners. So I've kind of <laughs> followed them since then. And my friend Clive was uh, their producer. So I always felt quite close to them. So to actually get to tour with them is, is a joy, really. Quite something. And um, I'm going to be playing Life of Riley next, uh, which is about your son, who is now in your band. What is that is. like for you both when you played that live? 
it's emotional to be. I don't know what it's like for him. It's emotional for me. It's probably just embarrassing for him, but, but it's very emotional for me, you know. Uh, it's a lovely thing that I get to sing that and I can sort of turn, look to my right and he's there, you know. So, it must be. You know, it's lovely. Uh, let's talk about Eurovision because it was in your hometown Liverpool last weekend you played a free gig in the city the atmosphere there I saw uh, little, some photos on your on your Twitter feed looked incredible how was it for you? Oh, it was great actually I think the city really kind of embraced the whole thing I mean Liverpool we like a party and we love music <laughs> so I mean I, I can't honestly say I ever watch Eurovision but as an excuse <laughs> for a party it was fantastic you know and and we got to play a few gigs and it, I, I, I loved it really. You know? Yeah. I was, why, I was gonna, one question I've been dying to ask you is that why is Liverpool so good at pop music? Because I feel like if you were born in Liverpool, you have an advantage over anyone else that's looking to be, you know, to go into that profession. You just seem to know how to make a tune. I think, you know, that obviously if you go to Ireland, there's a lot of music every pub you go into. There's a lot of Irish people Mm. who live in Liverpool historically and I think the docks so you had the army base actually was just up the road in Burton Wood mm -hmm. and all the kind of jazz musicians used to come in and play at the clubs in Liverpool and at that time and then you got all the northern soul records coming in off the docks and all the you know it was it's always been a musical kind of melting pot mm. even as a kid I remember you know, it, it was never just about the music that was popular that minute. You'd always go to a pub and you'd, it would be everything on the jukebox or everything people were playing would be, you know, very wide, from a very wide range of things. And I think we would love music and football, I think, in Liverpool. <laughs> Yeah. It makes sense. Which Liverpool band that isn't the Beatles, let's exclude those guys, would you want to be in if you weren't in the Lightning Seeds? Well, I think someone asked me to describe... When I was a producer before I did the Lightning Seeds, they asked me to describe my process. Mm -hmm. And I said, when I first started, I felt like I should just find a band I absolutely loved. And then I should pretend I was in that band. <laughs> and then when I produced them, I should make it sound like I wished it was if I was in it. <laughs> yeah. And that was my kind of process. And the first band I ever produced was Echo and the Bunnymen. And I fell in love with that band and I've never really fallen out of love with them, you know, so I think you have to be Echo and the Bunnymen. <laughs> hey, producer Mick, he's like, I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to yes, <laughs> all right, you know. Um, what do you reckon is the best Liverpool song that isn't well known enough? There was, a, there was a record I used to love by a band who never really made it. They were called Uberman. And they had a song called Surely Wall. I used to love that song. Sure. What's it called? Surely Wall. And don't ask me what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to check that out. I do love a tip from a musician that, you know what I mean, that I might not have heard. Um, now, listen, you are playing Latitude Festival in Suffolk. You've never played the festival before, right? No, never. I've heard great things about it, though. Everyone says how how great it is, so I'm really looking forward to being there. Ian, it is my favourite festival of them all. It is the perfect size. For me, size is important. When it comes to festivals, enough of that. Um, and I really do think that Latitude is the perfect festival for for the young, for the elderly, for families, for single people, for couples. It's, it's, it's an absolutely glorious event every single year, and I'm gutted that I can't be there this year because I'm on holiday. Otherwise, I'd be coming. Um, great lineup all weekend. You're playing this Saturday. Headlining that is Paolo Nutini. Have you ever seen him live? We played with Paolo once oh. outside at Edinburgh Castle as well. He's Did a you? Brilliant artist. He's, uh, he's such a you know, talented boy. Actually, I think he lives in Liverpool, actually. I see him around the place. Does he? He lives in Liverpool, yeah. Oh, he did, yeah. I saw him live at Benicassim Festival and it was when he just released Caustic Love and that performance of Iron Sky was just, I think I might have cried during it. Might have been a bit drunk, but it was very, very emotional. What's it like for festivals with you? Do you could you hang around or are you in and out, Ian? I tend to not be there that long, to be honest, you know, uh, I, but I always enjoy, I like to kind of be there quite a while before we play yeah. and then a couple of hours afterwards, but I don't camp out or anything. <laughs> well, I can guarantee you're going to have a hoot because it's my favourite festival and make sure you're there long enough to go and see the sheep because the right. sheep are a sight to behold. They're a different colour every year. They still do the sheep there? Yep, they do. Um, tickets are available at latitudefestival.com. Ian, it was an absolute pleasure to speak to you.